Hello guys and welcome back to TechWolf and today we are going to do CompTIA Plus Core 2 Operating System Practice Tests and this will be only concentrating on operating system questions. So, and if you are interested in more practice tests for CompTIA or any other examinations like CompTIA, Microsoft, Cisco, I am creating a playlist, go to the channel's homepage and you will find all different playlists for different exams, practice tests. So, no further ado, let's get into it. A technician is troubleshooting a Linux system where a service fails to start due to missing dependency. The system CTL status command shows dependency failed. Given a scenario involving Linux service management, what is the next best step? Restart the failed service using system CTL restart. Reinstall the service package using apt or yum. Clear the system journal with journal lctl dash dash flash. Modify the service file to ignore the dependency. Or check system CTL dependencies with the system CTL list dash dependencies or list dependencies. Which one is the correct answer to this question? And here the correct answer is that we would check system CTL dependencies with the system CTL list dependencies. As a dependency failed error indicates a missing or failed dependence service using system CTL list dependencies identifies the issue for targeted troubleshooting. Restarting is ineffective, reinstalling is premature, journaling flushing is irrelevant and ignoring dependencies risks instability. And next question, an administrator needs to configure a Windows Server to or 2022 system to allow remote desktop access only for a specific security group. Given a scenario involving securing Windows systems, what is the best method? Modify the remote desktop users group in computer management. Configure Windows Firewall to allow RDP only for group members. Edit group policy to restrict RDP access to the security group. Use PowerShell to set RDP permissions for the group or update the registry to limit RDP to the security group. Which one is the correct answer here? And here the correct answer is that we would need to edit group policy to restrict RDP access to the security group. As group policy, e.g. via gpedit.msc, allows precise control over RDP access by specifying allowed groups, ensuring security. The remote desktop users group is less granular. Firewalls can filter by a group. PowerShell is less standard and registry edits are riskier. Next question. A Windows 11 system displays a low disk space warning despite having sufficient free space on the C drive. Given scenario involving Windows troubleshooting, what is the most likely cause and resolution? So, if we have this uh, a warning, low disk space, what is the most likely cause and resolution from these options? System reserved partition full, extended using disk part, temporary files accumulation, clean them with disk cleanup, hidden recovery partition full, delete old recovery images, incorrect disk quota settings, adjust quotas in properties, corrupted file system, run check disk forward slash f to repair errors. So, which one would be the correct answer here? And here the correct answer is temporary files accumulation. Clean them with disk cleanup. As low disk space warnings can result from a temporary file. CG Windows update cache consuming space. Disk cleanup is the safest fix. System reserved or recovery partitions rarely trigger these quotas are user specific and file system corruption would show different symptoms. And next question. A technician is troubleshooting a Linux system where a user cannot execute a script despite having read and write permissions. 
So we are or that's technician troubleshooting a Linux system where the user cannot execute a script so he can't run a script despite having a read and write permission. So also for CompTIA Plus Core 2 for this exam make sure that you understand these reads and writes and all these permissions learn them inside out. As and here, given a scenario involving Linux permissions, what is the most likely cause and a resolution? Missing execute the permissions, add it using schmod plus x script dot s age. Cell Linux, denying execution, set the correct context with ch con. Incorrect shebang line, update the script to use hashtag exclamation mark forward slash bin forward slash bash file system mounted as no exec remount with exec option or user is not in sudo errors add user to sudo errors for script execution so sudo you know that that is the main user pretty much in linux so which one is the correct answer in this question and the correct answer here is missing execute the permission edit using chmod plus x script dot sh. Oh, sorry, need to click it. And here, script requires execute permission to run, which is granted by read write permissions using chmod plus x adds it. Cell Linux could be an issue, but is less common. Shebang issues cause different errors. No exec mounts are rare and sudo errors is irrelevant for a non-privileged scripts. A macOS system user cannot access an application due to gatekeeper restrictions after downloading it from an unverified developer. Given a scenario involving a macOS security, what is the most secure way to allow the application to run? Use spctl-add to whitelist application in Gatekeeper. Disable Gatekeeper temporarily using sudo spctl-master-disable. Open the application via terminal with the xattr-d command. Modify system preferences to allow the app under security and privacy. Red downloads the application from the Mac App Store. Which one would be the correct answer here? And here the correct answer is to modify system preference to allow the app under security privacy. As, Mac as Mac OS Gatekeeper prompts allow users to permit unverified apps in system preferences, security and privacy, which is the most secure and user friendly method. Next question. A user reports that a Windows 10 system cannot connect to a Wi-Fi network after a recent update. The network adapter shows no internet secured. Given a scenario involving troubleshooting connectivity, what is the most likely cause and resolution? DHCP failure. Release and renew the IP address using IP config. Incorrect DNS settings. Configure Go Google DNS, which is 8.8.8.8 manually, which you can set up manually. Windows firewall blocking. Create an exception for Wi Fi connections. Outdated Wi Fi driver. Update the driver via device manager. Or corrupted network stack. Reset it using NetSH WinSock reset. Which one would be the correct answer here? And here the correct answer is outdated Wi-Fi driver updates the driver via device manager. As post update connectivity issues often stem from outdated or incompatible drivers. Updating the Wi-Fi driver is the most direct fix. As DHCP issues would show different errors, DNS settings are secondary, firewall issues are unlikely and and resetting the network stack is broader fix. A Linux administrator needs to schedule a recurring task to back up forward slash var dot forward slash log to remote server every midnight. Given a scenario involving Linux administration, which tool and method are most appropriate? 
and here you should also know how to set these things which you will need to repeat repetitive tasks or run scripts repetitive tasks in Linux because Linux is the most popular system especially when it comes to servers and answers are use cron to schedule a rsync command to the remote server configure system D timer to run a tar backup script set up an anchor to copy logs using scp daily use add to schedule a nightly cp command to the remote server or create bash script with rc clone and, and schedule it via cron tab which one would be the correct answer here and here's the correct answer is a use a cron schedule an rsync command to the remote server Use a cron schedule an rsync command to remote server and cron is, and you should know also, that cron is the standard tool for scheduling recurring tasks and rsync is then efficient for remote backups, ensuring only changed files are transferred. System D timers are more complex, anacron is for non-continuous systems, at is for one-time tasks and our clone is less common than our thing for this purpose. A Windows Server 2022 system experiences slow performance due to high disk input output or I forward slash O. Task manager shows svhost.exe consuming significant resources. Given a scenario involving Windows troubleshooting, what is the best next step? Restart the service restart the server service to reset svc host.exe processes. Run SFC forward slash scan now to check for corrupted system files. Use resource monitor to identify the specific service causing high I.O. or input output. Increase virtual memory allocation to reduce disk input output or I.O. Disable Windows Update to prevent svchost.exe activity. And here the correct answer is use a resource monitor to identify specific service causing high input output. As svchost.exe hosts multiple services and a resource monitor can pinpoint which service is causing high disk input output ta or for targeted troubleshooting. Restarting the service is premature, SFC forward slash scan now addresses corruption, not input output, virtual memory tweaks are secondary and disabling updates is risky and unrelated to this scenario. A technician needs to configure a dual boot system with Windows 11 and Ubuntu 24.04 on a UEFI based machine. Given a scenario involving operating system installation and setup, what is the critical step to ensure both operating systems boot correctly? Install Ubuntu first, then Windows and configure Grub to manage both. Install Windows first, then Ubuntu and let Grub configure the boot order. Create separate EFI partitions for each operating system during installation. Disable secure boot in UEFI to allow Grub to load Ubuntu or use BC Dedit to add Ubuntu to the Windows Boot Manager. Which one would be the correct answer here? And here the correct answer is to install Windows first, then Ubuntu and let Grub configure the boot order. As Installing Windows first allows Ubuntu Grab boot order to detect and configure both operating systems in the EFI boot order, ensuring compatibility. Installing Ubuntu first risks Windows overwriting Grub. Separate EFI partitions are unnecessary. Disabling secure boot may not be required and BC Dedit is less reliable for Linux. A macOS Monterey system fails to install a critical security update, citing insufficient disk space. Given a scenario involving macOS troubleshooting, what is the best approach to resolve this while preserving user data? Use disk utility to resize the APFS container and free space. 
run sudo purge to clear cached files and retry the update.v, boot into recovery mode and reinstall macOS without formatting, delete time machine snapshots using tmutil to reclaim space, or offload the user files to iCloud and remove them locally. What would be the best answer or what would be the correct answer for this? And the correct answer is delete time machine snapshots using tmutil to reclaim space as time machine snapshots often consume significant APFS space, preventing for updates. Using tmutil to delete them is, tar is targeted, non-destructive solution. Resizing containers is complex, purge clears minimal cache, reinstalling macOS is overkill, and iCloud offloading may not free enough space.